All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a bit of a gloomy San Diego today, but uh, I am delighted to be joined by Dr. Anthony Simmons, who is in Chesapeake Bay in Virginia. How are you doing, Dr. Anthony? Oh, perfect, thank you. Yeah, and Dr. Anthony is a retired Navy captain who served 28 years as a surface warfare officer. His Navy experience includes four at-sea commands, patrol coast to Aegis destroyers, a destroyer squadron, and ashore you developed uh, human resource strategies for the Bureau of Naval Personnel and the Strategic Plan and Re uh, Resource Officer. Uh, you have also gotten a, a, a doctorate degree in strategic leadership from Regent University, a master's in mechanical engineering from the Naval Postgraduate Robotics. Or, or, and uh, today you are owner of Six Gear Consulting, which is a leadership performance and consulting practice that instructs leaders how to lead through bridging people and technology. So first of all, thank you for your service. And what a, wow, what an impressive service it was too. And uh, so before we get before we get into um, into the interview, just give me your transition from the Navy to doing to consulting practice in the private sector. Just give me a little bit of a, a background on, on that story and that shift and what you think your background in the Navy brings to what you do today. OK, as you can see, you talked about uh, I spoke to my credentials there. First of all, first of all, the Navy is a microcosm of society. So uh, most of what we do, you know, is really uh, just a version of what society makeup is about. So uh, I, as you noticed from getting my doctorate in Regent University in uh, organizational leadership, I pretty much talked to uh, the intersection of uh my hands-on experience traveling to over 63 countries and tied it into academia to more, more so formalize uh, who I am so I could really talk to academia and to best uh, codify uh, my leadership experiences uh, at 28 years uh, in the Navy. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about um, the, the idea of uh, bridging uh, people and technology because I mean, we live in, a, in obviously in a world today that has technology that's beyond the belief of even, a, I would say, a, a respectfully say, people like ourselves who maybe are a, are a little older and remember days uh, before technology was so ubiquitous. But now it's everywhere and you have AI. And, then, and I think people are feeling, starting to feel un, slightly uneasy and uncomfortable about where technology is going from, from a human point of view. Yes, that's a couple of things that led me into this. One in particular was when I was going through department head school in 1997, the commanding officer of the surface warfare school uh, kicked off the class with a comment saying, uh, this is, uh, no matter how much technology evolves, uh, this will always be a man in the loop that will never be a completely digital world. Mm -hmm. So then I tied that into, I was going through Junt Forces Staff College in 2011, and I selected the thesis on interorganization relationships. And what it tied into was 9-11. We just had uh, just so much information that was available in our portals there, but we just didn't know what to pull down from the portals because there was not much human intervention there. Everything was just strictly based on how much we could compile, you know, using different uh, resources and sensors to uh, collect information. So it was not so much the availability of information, it was the application. How do we know what to apply? And so throughout the interorganization relationship, you know, I said, Ben, that I came through, the, I'm a hybrid in the sense that I started out with in the days when we didn't have as much technology mm -hmm. and throughout time, would, everyone became PowerPoint Rangers and everything mm -hmm. was basically beginning to go towards AI uh, in the early 2000s. And so I said, well, I can't not uh, neglect what technology offers. So I got the bridge to two technology and people. So I said, six gear consultant equips organizations to speed into the future on information highway and overdrive without burning people skills with the operative piece there, not burning people skills. We have to use the basic concepts of communication. And by you, uh, and that's by using those skills, I think that will help us to uh, apply all the information that's available to make sense of it through human intervention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and uh, I like what you say there about you know the the, the communication is is the key element there because uh, you know let's face it that in the absence of information in the absence of 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 people addressing this, 
we kind of fill in the gaps ourselves, right? Exactly. And that, and that can become an issue. So how do you, yeah, so uh, how do you help organizations with that communication piece? Because they may not even realize how, how maybe uneasy people are. Yeah, first you got to start with self-assessments mm -hmm. and uh, emotional intelligence. You know, which uh, the five components of, uh, according to Daniel Goldman, you, you have to be self-aware, and then you have to self-manage. Then you have to apply interpersonal skills, empathy, and have the ability to motivate. So, start part one is really helping people identify where they are and how they envision what they have at their disposal. So, we start there through self-assessments and. Uh, and through uh, the five components of emotional intelligence in order to get a good uh, start, jump off point. Mm -hmm. So and explain to you a little bit, you mentioned self-awareness, right? And I think for me, self-awareness is the most critical thing that people, you know, can develop. Uh, it, it is definitely like it fast tracks everything you do once you become self-aware, but it's not an easy process. So well, how do you help people or advise people that process of becoming self-aware? Because sometimes it's going to, if you go on a journey of, of self-awareness, it's going to throw up things that maybe you wouldn't, you don't really want to acknowledge. Yes, but that's the tough part. You know, it's about how you approach people. It, it, it goes to social uh, in, intelligence. You know, Daniel Goldman has a new book out. It has to do with uh, optimizing the workforce there. And it goes, uh, what I was mentioning earlier, it, it's, it's just a leadership imperative now. You know, no matter how many technical skills you acquire in life, you have to apply empathy. And that's understanding your surroundings. And if you... Uh, take the concerted effort, you know, when you're interacting with people to understand who they are, then that builds on your social uh, intelligence. And that in turn uh, makes you more aware. But part one is understanding that it's important to be aware. And then once you figure that piece out there, uh, you don't get it so much as a uh, a slap in the face uh, in that that's the piece that uh, we have to be sort of uh, uh, in tune with in order to not insult someone. We have to be willing to uh, assess and improve. One of my key uh, uh, I feel assets or attributes in life is to help people. In order to help people, I have to help myself. And that's part one for most people. And in order to help yourself, it starts with self-awareness, do self-assessments. Yeah, no, I, I, no, I couldn't agree more. And it's a, you know, it's a, it's a process like anything else. Um, but the sooner you embark on it, the better. Uh, and you mentioned a lot about empathy and empathy uh, and authenticity, right? Those, uh, I think, empathy was or authenticity. One of those was the buzzword of 2023. I think it was even Merriam-Webster had it as the word of the year, or something like that. Uh, so there's now a lot of people talking about this, but I don't think people really understand what uh, you can't be authentic by being inauthentic. And I think that somehow, you know, they're thinking, how do I put on an authentic persona instead of and how do I develop empathy, you know, so that people see that I have empathy, which is not really the right approach. But how do you help people with that? Because I really think people are, gra are are struggling with that whole authenticity and empathy piece. OK, let's look big picture here. OK, yep. what? Most of what you read nowadays is lack of trust, okay? Mm -hmm. What causes lack of trust? Well, lack of communication. Why don't people communicate? Lack of transparency. So once we, once we figure those pieces out, in, in the end of the day, we really want to do well. We want, we want to connect, and that's one of the challenges we have. So in order to connect, there has to be trust. There has to be transparency, and that comes through communicating. And then those pieces there will equate to having empathy. People don't have empathy because they don't know they don't appreciate and understand other people. So I was doing a leadership course on connection and in the key pieces, I came up with my three pillars there in order to connect, you have to have trust, you have to communicate and um, it have to be transparent in order to bring those full circle and the underlying uh, elements there happen to be the five components of emotional intelligence with empathy being one of those components as I spoke to earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and it's really it's it's really interesting as well is that uh, is that as you said like commu the communication piece is is critical, but we've also got the other challenge today in a lot of organizations that are set up differently than they've ever been before. You know, before people were used to maybe being in a building together, an office together. Now maybe some people are in an office, some people are remote. Maybe you don't even have all full-time employees. Maybe you have a bunch of contractors. Maybe they're all spread out all over the globe. So now 
your communication skill, it means that you have to be able to communicate with somebody who is remote and perhaps even in a different country, comes from a different culture, background, all of that kind of stuff. You need to be able to communicate to them as well as you communicate to the person sitting beside you. Yes, you know, there are some uh, pros and cons. I just finished reading Harvard, Harvard Business Review on hybrid workforces, and it goes to some of the pieces you're talking about. You talk about time and place. You know, where are people? How do we connect? The positive part of that is the fact that you're actually doing stuff, uh, communicating in the virtual world. People sort of letting you inside of their house because you're seeing them from where they are. Yeah. And, and one of the challenges in society is meeting people on their grounds, understanding their cultures. So you go inside of someone else's house, if I say in the office, then you see how they live. You see who they are, what they what they like, lackings are. So opposed to just judging someone based on your perspective when you see them in the office mm. so there are a lot of uh pros to that that was a really good read uh in, in that uh particular uh narrative on a, a hybrid workforces and next one of the key takeaways was getting inside of other people's cultures you know through the virtual world and it has opened up the communications by letting people inside of where they are yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. I mean, it's and, and actually, I love the way you put that because I hadn't thought of that before. But yeah, your people are inviting you into their homes in a way that, uh, you know, they wouldn't have been you would never probably have seen anything about their home or their or background otherwise. Uh, and the other thing about that whole, uh, you know, as you go global, I personally I have found it so fascinating to work with people in different regions in the world and it's a bit different, but, and even virtually and then learning a lot about them just by almost by osmosis. And I think that way you can get much better um, connection. But as you say, it's, it's also about taking an interest, isn't it? I mean, and that's the other thing too, is being taking a genuine interest in people as opposed to a, you know, maybe a less than genuine one. Yes, I'll tell you one of my biggest experiences and where a lot of my uh, thinking with this uh, whole cultural piece and, and, and interacting with people and mm. connecting, it comes from, you know, uh, serving in the Navy. You know, you go back to the days of uh, President Roosevelt. He was a big diplomat and he did the selling of the Great White Fleet. He said, let's just steam around the world so we can see people and do diplomacy. And that's what the Navy does to this day is build relationships. And you go into these countries and we we know that our course is different here. So we'll go inside of the country for a couple of days ashore. We'll do like sporting events, community relations, goodwill projects, just to go to their culture event, et cetera, et cetera. I was in Shanghai, China in 2008, and I had the opportunity to go, you know, into like art shows and huh. uh, aerobic shows and just understand their, their culture there. And same with the Koreans, we would operate with those that country. But the first thing we have to understand their culture in order to better operate together. Because once we, once you did that, then you you don't have such a one hegemon of you know an inferior nation we all become one so that that was really key and, and that's one of the like i say one of the underlying factors that uh that pushed me to uh you know want to tell my story and tie it into academia and where i think i can make a difference in society you know based on that those experiences yeah no no i love that idea but the, about the idea of the goodwill and the kind of being an, an, an ambassador and and what you outlined there is is what you need to build in the modern organization is you know you have to have sort of, almost like you almost have to have a a diplomatic approach as you said a, a <laughs> yes. approach di diplomacy and understand that every you know the situations are different and those days of 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 basically broadcast communications are gone you have to communicate to the odd to different audiences in different ways that, that's that's correct and, and i tell you i credit the united states navy we do such a good job with you know building uh diplomats and building those skills and and throughout the 20 years i served it was just a lifelong journey of learning and getting better and once i retired i wanted to continue that journey because i feel like that's the only way i can potentially make a difference in society and in that vein i've recently uh studied some book dr elmore on diversity and uh leading the diversity force of the future and it just gives you a more of appreciation for your millennials and your COVID generation which is you know effectively the z generation and i tell you that they're all great generations myself uh I'm an Xer, but uh, I I don't feel like that I've been better off as an Xer than uh, the Ys and the Zs. It's just a matter of how do you touch them, and in order to uh, reach them, you have to grow and understand what it is they're looking for. They don't want to be lectured to, you know. They just want you to lead by example. But they are watching. But mm -hmm. we have to continue to grow if we want to make a difference in society. Mm -hmm. That's just the bottom line. Yeah, no, great what you said there because, uh, and as you said, they're watching, and I think. Uh, you know that's 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 one of the 
most fundamental pieces, I think, you know, to leadership is that uh, you have to model behavior, right? I could, as you know, Dr. Anthony, I, I could spend all day, I could lecture you for the next two hours about what you should believe and why you should do this and why you should do that. Uh, and then you will, you, then you'll see me acting slightly differently afterwards and you'll jettison everything I just said. Um, <laughs> because, or you'll just ignore it because it's coming at you like this. But if you see me acting in the way that you go, oh, that's interesting. I see he does live this out or because he does this, this happens and it's all good. So maybe I need to start to um, act a little bit more in that way. But I think it's all, and I wish the whole and this just goes for society at large. I wish people would model behavior instead of just trying to lecture people. I'll tell you what makes that happen. How do you, that becomes a reality. You know, we, we grew up in a world where we had mentors mm -hmm. and now we move into an environment of coaching and leadership coaching was my specialty when I did my uh, doctoral scholarship there. And the difference between mentoring coaching is, and, and I talked to this in my book, Champion Organization Wellness, uh, and it's a chapter on coaching, chapter five, I believe there. And uh, what, what it talks about, uh, a mentor is you just, someone shows you the example and you say, oh man, I want to be like that person. I've done so well, et cetera, et cetera. But now when it, and it's more like a inferior to superior type of relationship where different in coaching is more so it's like a relationship of co-equals where you ask powerful questions and then you do intuitive listening there in order to connect with the people that, that you are actually trying to uh, uh, help you know, them get into a better position of success. So which is a different direction now. And then that also calls for uh, the days of lecturing. It's just, there is no longer uh, optimal or ideal, you know, for uh, gaining information and knowledge. I think we more into an environment of uh, town home settings, town hall settings per se, even the, uh, the classrooms now are more of a uh, a discussion vice a lecture so those days are pretty much i said are, are outdated so that goes back again to what i call the coaching construct which enables that uh, uh relationship of empowerment between co-equals yeah and it's and, and, and i love you brought up coaching because i think coaching is one of the most misunderstood uh, you know roles because a lot of people's idea of coaching goes back to the last time they had a coach was somebody in high school or college or whatever which was standing on the sidelines shouting at them telling them what to do and just oh no do this this here's the play look just follow this and that's sometimes people think oh that's how you coach you coach by <laughs> telling people and of course that's not how and so i think the work that people like you are doing is so critical in in helping people understand what what real coaching is I, I appreciate that. I do. I think that's how you sustain successes and also uh, you build authentic relationships. You know, you called it were earlier <laughs> authentic and it comes to coaching because you do more listening, not just actually listening on the surface. You do intuitive listening where you're not only hearing what someone is saying, you really try to understand what is their what it is they're saying, where they're saying it. And then a step further is you help them to uh go into their introspective and determine how do they best overcome the predicament they're in. Mm -hmm. And so they solve their own problems. Then you just stay more so in a supporting role. And that within itself is empowerment. And for, as you know, the old legacy coaching style, you know, people from the International Coaching Federation, they will be quick to say, hey, these are completely different concepts. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, which I think is is fantastic because it's, it's so neat. Like I said, the work that you're doing with coaching is so needed. It's so needed that people you know, learn how to coach properly. So if you if you had one piece of advice for organizations in 2024 of one thing to do differently, what would you advise them? As I said earlier, we really have to connect and appreciate people from where they are, you know, culturally, uh, what have you. You know, you look at America, even though we're in a virtual world now where everything is global, but even within the United States of America, it's so many micro cultures here mm. and we judge everyone based on how we see the world. And that's just not empathy. So I really uh, would like to, people to really just appreciate each other and get away from all the negative connotations. We struggling now with DEI and, you know, there are some challenges there. First, you have too many terms because there's room for error when you throw a lot of terms in there. Mm -hmm. And you never want to say it as a quota system. We, we don't want, we, we tried that before, you know, historically with uh, affirmative action and other pieces there. The, the key is just appreciate everyone and put the resources and the tools in place to facilitate an environment where people appreciate each other. That would be my uh, uh, get off the stage uh, piece. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, listen, all of Dr. Anthony's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. 
Yeah, I do a leadership consulting uh, on my company's uh, Six Gear Consulting. Six Gear is common sense. That means putting the man back into the loop there. That uh, that that uh, when I combine your five senses, it's a common aspect, which are the people skill piece there. So really, uh, go out to my website. It's sixgearconsulting.com. That's S-I-X-T-H gearconsulting.com. And I will be happy to entertain you and see what I can do to, so we can make each other better. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, I would encourage you to go check out Dr. Anthony's work. Uh, go to the website. Like I said, uh, the the work that he's doing, I think, is is critical. And uh, and yeah, if you want to be successful going forward, you're going to have to figure out how to bring lots of people together from <clears throat> very different circumstances, locations, everything. But you know what? It's it's a fun challenge. If I may add to one other it's, piece, also uh, pick up my book, Champion in Organization Wellness, and it's also a, a preview there on the website there. And of course, the question you asked me about what would I offer organizations is in there. And the title in itself is uh, is, is, is uh, fulfilling, Champion in Organization Wellness. Thank you. Absolutely. And we will have that. Uh, we'll have the details of that below as well. So go check that out too. Listen, thanks again, uh, Dr. Antti. Thank you for all your service and thank you for the work that you're doing today. And thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thanks, John.